There was a caveman presented to us by Naris. I'm not going to try to say his last name. It'd probably be insulting if I did, because it's pretty complex. There was a caveman is a retro-style 2D platformer that promises challenging gameplay, interesting boss fights, and tons of dinosaur enemies to fight. According to the developer, the game is still in its pretty early in a pretty early stage, and a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing right now is set to change, including the graphics, sounds, and all kinds of game mechanics. So let's see if we can help them along with our feedback. All right, so this is There Was a Caveman. Pretty basic start menu. Like you said, a lot of it is still subject to change. I'm not hearing any music or anything. Controls are controls in full screen are our only option so far. No problem. I do like the graphic style, though. It's very nice. So as you can see uh, in the top left, or you might be able to see, my FPS is kind of bonkers right now. Sound design seems pretty good. Controls are very tight. Unfortunately, this game does not have gamepad support yet. At least it doesn't seem that way. My PS3 controller that is set like a Xbox controller does not seem to work. I seem to be able to jump, double jump, attack, and I just did a dash, but it looks like that's on cooldown. But these controls are very tight. I'm loving it. Acceleration and deceleration is pretty much non-existent, which I always like in my platformers. Loving the animations. Kill the turtle. That's a good sign. Overall, I really do like this graphic style. Look at it. That's some beautiful pixel art. I kind of like twirl my my club like a uh, oh that kind of like a helicopter. I think that's how I'm getting my double jump out of that. I wonder if that actually damages enemies too, because it looks like it would. Let's test that. See if we can get a flying enemy somewhere. Ah, I want it. Okay, I got rocks now. Uh, what button is rocks? S. Works for me. Yay. So I was promised interesting throwing mechanics. I gotta say though, this game is in oh two hits. Okay. So he's a tough little dinosaur. Ooh. All right, simple enough. I would like if there was some kind of introduction to two hit enemies. I don't know how the easiest way for you to introduce such a thing without me directly combating them, but just an idea. Because up until like at this point in the sti at this point in the game, I kind of figure I can just kill anything with one hit. Of course, I should recognize that a dinosaur would be tougher than a. Well, actually, no. I would think a turtle would be able to take more hits than a dinosaur would. So I don't know. It'd be nice if it is, if a slower enemy was introduced for your first two hit challenge. I guess you could say. What am I doing? Oh, wrong button. Apparently, I'm dying. Spikes are one hit kills. Now I know. Unfortunately, not playing on playing on keyboard controls instead of standard uh, control con controller controls can kind of throw me off sometimes. It's a little weird that S is the button for throw. I understand it's kind of like a WASD style thing, but for whatever reason, my mind just doesn't like it. But it definitely works once I catch on. Okay, I guess I got to get that double jump perfectly right. That one's more on my failure than anything. That's introduced perfectly fine. I should have just recognized that it's a challenging jump that I need to actually make perfectly. And I assume... Okay, I can double jump once I fall off something. That works fine. Alright, let's... Alright, I have the dash. That's what I'm forgetting. I keep forgetting I have a dash. It seems like a really long cooldown, though. You can see on the bottom left when it's disabled. There we go. It seems like a really long cooldown, and I'm not sure what the purpose of such a long cooldown is. Now, one thing you might want to do there to remind me that I have a dash is maybe put some kind of, like, caveman drawings or something in the background. That'd be really cool. Like, some kind of caveman drawings of a guy dashing forward. Some kind of reminders when you're at the early stage of the game, when you barely remember the mechanics. It really helps if you somehow drive the point home that, hey, this is something you can do. And then the point kind of tends to stick after a while. So you don't have to keep doing that. Ooh, bone. Three bones. Three thrown bones. Let me guess. Is this kind of like Castlevania? Yep, I throw bones up. Kind of like axes. Or, you know, the skeleton bones if you ever played uh, Castlevania. Aria of Sorrows. Awesome game, by the way. Definitely one that everybody should check out in their time. Aria of Sorrows and Dawn of Sorrows. Great games. Had a lovely little Pokemon slash Castlevania vibe to it. Pokemon in the sense that every enemy that you killed could potentially give you... Oh, hello. Could potentially give you some kind of a uh, 
a power. So you kind of got, you had to catch them all, you know? It's pretty neat. I like that I grabbed these vines automatically. That was a very smart move. Oh, whoops, but that wasn't a smart move. <laughs> I can't seem to jump off the vines, though, I'm noticing. I can attack, that's good, but... Yeah, it seems like I would really want to, like, try to jump off of that, you know? I could just kind of climb off it, but it feels more natural if I'm allowed to jump off of it. Yeah, we definitely gotta get you some music, though, man. I don't know what kind of music you think would fit the mood here, but just with the graphical style you're going with, I would love some kind of a, uh, some kind of a retro-style soundtrack. Something in the SNES era, I'm thinking. Ooh, that looks like a goodie. Aha! That's a nice introduction to secrets right there. Look at that. So the the developer actually set it up so you can clearly see that there's a heart there, and your first instinct is to try to just go directly to it by going right, and that ends up working, which sets up the fact that there is, in fact, secrets in this game where there are just walls you can go through. So that's kudos to the developer. That's how you want to introduce secrets right in your game. And what about this? Anything over here? I don't know why I thought I could maybe go through that. Something was a little odd with how high up that other vine goes. I was kind of wondering, hey, maybe I can get in there, too. Boy, I am killing for a soundtrack. You know, just, just to get something going, we're going to keep keep going with that VVVVV soundtrack. Because it kind of almost fits the theme, you know? Just a little older. Then again, this is prehistoric. I don't know how much older you can get. Please note, if you're watching this, this is totally not the soundtrack to this game. This is absolutely the soundtrack to VVVVV. And, oh my goodness, that boulder's gonna kill me. Oh no, oh no, what have I done? Ah, oh, okay, I guess I lived through that. That I would have expected to be a one-hit kill. Guess I lucked out with that one. Alright. Let's see. Mine are better. Mine are better. I do like how they're introducing this particular boss, because you get a ton of bones to work with ahead of time, so you're basically fighting this boss the same way he's fighting you. You're using the same exact tactic of shooting rocks up, the only difference is he doesn't move. Very nice little mini boss there, or if that's going to be a common enemy, very nice little common enemy. I like the theme. Ow. Looks like that's a checkpoint. Alright, so I guess it will be a common enemy, but at least I can fight it normally like this. That was an excellent introduction to that enemy the first time, though. That was very Mega Man-esque in the level design of it all. Okay, so we can go through things by pressing down. Now I know. I don't know why, but I kind of want it where if I hit a dinosaur, they can't hurt me for a little while. I don't know if that makes sense. Just because those guys are... They get pretty aggressive pretty quickly when they first see you. When line of sight occurs. Ooh, another golden heart down there? Yes, it is. The question is, do I want to risk it? I have no idea what's down there. So this is why I always like to tell... Yep, there we go. I did have a kind of an idea, because the sound design allowed me to. I don't know if you guys heard, but there was crackling lava sounds. The music might be overpowering it, so let me... Just so you can hear. So, although he didn't give me any kind of visual indication that there was danger below, I heard the lava, and I was inherently like, Oh, I don't want to go down there. I would still prefer some kind of visual indicator, maybe if you can, like, have, uh, you see those little sparks flying up a little bit? I'd love it if there was maybe smoke or something around the area. That'd be a really nice little indicator. But I still want that heart, so I'm gonna take a leap of faith here. Wait, first I'm gonna make sure I'm not stupid. Can I break this? Okay, leap of faith. Oh, that was a horrible leap of faith. What was I thinking? That's where secrets can get you in trouble, but fortunately there are no lives in this game, but it looks like I did lose my extra heart that I got earlier by dying, so... These golden hearts are not permanent, it seems. Oh, there we go. This was the less stupid way to get to it. <laughs> yes, the audience agrees. This game is so much better with some kind of music. I couldn't agree more. This game... Look at this. This, this music... By, in fact, I insist you get in touch with Soli and at least talk to him, because Soli, the creator of the VVVVV soundtrack, I think it's five times. V five times or V six times? Whatever. The creator of this soundtrack does absolutely excellent old school music. And I would be remiss if I didn't say go check him out and go see if you can even strike a deal with him. When he did the VVVV soundtrack, he was relatively unknown. I don't know, uh... Ah, uh, no, no, no! Oh, that was close. I like that you give knockback on hit, but you allow recovery after a short amount of time. Outstanding choice. These are some of the tightest controls I've seen in a 2D platformer in a little while now. 
Shovel Knight, I think, is comparable to how tight these controls are. Whoops. Except I keep pressing the wrong button. Very nice. But yeah, I think, just given what we're hearing right now and how it really kind of feels like... Okay, it doesn't go with the, the game itself, but it goes with the theme of the game, the retro theme. I really think it'd be a nice match if you and Soli chatted a little while. Uh, looks like... Oh, you can't go back. I wanted to see if I could go forward and then go back to see if there was something to explore down there, but now that I've done that, I can't go backwards. That kind of saddens me. Oh, first boss. All right, big boy. I'm going to throw rocks. Oh, okay. No, I'm going to dash at you. Ow. Nope. Dead. I really don't like that I lose my heart bonuses by dying. It seems like it's a reverse steamroll mechanic. I'm not, not a fan of that, sadly. Ow. Oh, hello. Ow. Okay, so the key to this is to deflect his projectiles, and then get him when he's stunned. I got it. Again, very Mega Man-esque. You can tell there are a lot of cues taken from Mega Man in this game, in terms of level design and enemy design. Although I don't think I can actually deflect them back to him, they don't come at the right angle. But I can certainly whack the- oh, whack the heck out of him. Oh, I can hit him with him. I just have to be skillful. Ow. And not die. <laughs> I'd almost recommend you maybe make the invincibility time a little bit longer, because you can kind of get comboed, but at the same time, it is supposed to be a challenging game, and I would hate to say dial back the challenge because I'm sucking at it. That's never something you should go with. If you want a challenging game, which it seems like you certainly do, I'd say you're on the right track with it. What do we got? Oh! There we go. And just like Mega Man, I'm learning from my mistakes, and I'm getting better every time I fight him. Except, not like Mega Man, there's no lives I have to worry about, so dying isn't that big a deal. Which is good. Because, I've said it many times before, but lives... Live systems should be dead by now. They are a byproduct of the arcade era. And since we're not doling out quarters anymore just to, uh... Oh! Just to keep people playing... It seems... Ah! Oh, so close. It seems pointless to keep lives around anymore. Uh, forget that part of the soundtrack, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. Would you guys agree, would uh, Chad agree that lives are just something that shouldn't be in video games anymore? That lives just detract from gameplay rather than help? They definitely served a purpose in the past, no doubt, but that time has passed and is long faded. Look, I already got him on the triple shot, but he's already got me down to one heart, so I guess we're both trading blows here. Ah! I should really be doing better than this. A controller would help, but, you know, I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm sure he's working on controller support down the line. Now, it seems like he, he does this weird thing where he goes from spitting to crackling his head down on the ground really quickly. It doesn't give you much time to dodge the projectile before the spikes start coming down. You see how it's kind of immediate there? That seems like it can really get you in trouble because you could be dodging the projectile no matter where you are. And it can still end up getting you. Granted, you could just hit the projectile, but even still, sometimes you're not really in mallet range of the projectile. There we go. Definitely a challenging boss fight. I love it! I love it! I gotta say, this is very beautiful. Chat agrees, it's very arcade era. Yeah, and we can definitely ditch the whole arcade era thing, which I'm happy this game did. This game completely... Just, it's a, no lives, just checkpoints. That's how you do it. But yeah, this is an excellent start, I gotta say. I love the graphic style, even if it is planning on changing. I love the, the enemy types. I love the whole dinosaur theme. It's very nice. And it's got some ways to go, don't get me wrong. It's only the first level I'm seeing here. But if the game continues in this fashion, I think it's got a bright future out of it. Very nice. So, that was There Was a Caveman. And once again, that game was prevent presented to us by Naris Amatniex. Amatniex. I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you very much, Naris, for presenting that game to me. And I look forward to seeing more of this game in the future.